the human body is the most complex system ever created the more we learn about it the more appreciation we have about what a rich system it is greetings of the day to you my dear glorians of standard 8 a hearty welcome to another class of science today let us study human body and organ system in this chapter we will study the following respiration and its types respiratory system structure and function blood circulatory system heart its structure and functions blood vessels its structure and functions study of blood cells blood donation and blood pressure before we begin with the chapter time to recall something that you have learned last year question 1 from what the organs and organ systems are made of you may recall that organs are made of tissues that perform specific function organ system is made up of group of organs collectively performing a specific function we can see that tissues are made from cell organs are made from tissues the tissues that make organs could be of different types different organs make organ system here is excretory system shown so this way from cell we get the next level of organization tissue level from tissue level we get the next level that is organ level and then organ system question number 2 which organ systems are present in human body the different organ systems present in human body seen here are muscular system skeletal system circulatory system digestive system respiratory system nervous system etc you may also recall that you have learned different characteristics of living organisms we know that living organisms can respire they can reproduce they grow they move they excrete waste they respond to stimuli they are able to take nutrients etc the presence of these characteristics in living organisms help us to distinguish living organisms from non living organisms the existence of life is mainly based on certain functions and processes there are certain basic vital processes which are essential for an organism to stay healthy and to maintain the proper functioning of the body's organ systems and are necessary for survival these basic essential activities performed by an organism are called as life processes the various organ systems seen here help in proper functioning of our body the life processes that we just learned about can happen only when these organ systems work in coordination with each other not just coordination among the different organ systems is essential to maintain life processes but energy is required to operate these life processes energy comes from food when food gets digested it turns into soluble form 
this soluble form is then transported to different cells of our body via the blood production of energy takes place in the cells and do you know the cell organelle that is involved in energy production yes you have learnt it in the previous chapter it is the mitochondria that is the reason it is called the power house of the cell the release of energy takes place only when glucose combines with oxygen in other words when glucose is oxidized when this oxidation takes place energy is released this energy is stored in the form of energy currency called as atp which is adenine triphosphate thus we conclude from this that energy production can take place only when oxygen can reach the cells and also when soluble nutrients such as glucose can reach the cell for energy production two things that are essential are glucose and oxygen glucose is a soluble nutrient digestion of food turns the insoluble complex food into simple soluble form glucose is one such example of soluble nutrient how does glucose reach the cells as told to you earlier it is transported via the blood thus the circulatory system is involved in this how does the body get oxygen through respiratory system isn't it but how does the oxygen from the lungs reach the different cells of the body when the oxygen from the lungs first gets into blood how does this happen well we will learn about it a little later the blood then transports the oxygen to different cells of the body thus we see the involvement of both the circulatory system and respiratory system in energy production respiration takes place through three steps we will learn about each of them in detail the three steps in respiration are external respiration internal respiration and cellular respiration in external respiration exchange of gases takes place between environment and lungs in internal respiration exchange of gases takes place between tissue and blood while cellular respiration takes place in the cells where energy is released that is energy production is taking place in the cell that is the mitochondria the organelle mitochondria of the cell the two processes involved in external respiration are inspiration or inhalation and expiration or exhalation during inhalation oxygen from the air enters through the nose and gets into the lungs through the windpipe or trachea in exhalation carbon dioxide and water vapor from the lungs are expelled out thus in external respiration we see exchange of gases between the environment and lungs coming to internal respiration your exchange of gases takes place from the blood into tissues and from tissue into the blood here you can see these disclite cells are red blood cells oxygen from the blood enters the tissue and carbon dioxide from the tissue 
enters the blood. Next, cellular respiration. In cellular respiration, glucose is oxidized in the cells to produce energy in the form of ATP. Cellular respiration can be summarized in the equation as below C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives us 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy in the form of ATP. C6H12O6 stands for glucose. Glucose combines with oxygen. So this is oxidation of glucose. This oxidation releases energy in the form of ATP. Carbon dioxide and water vapor are waste products. And these waste products are then exhaled out during exhalation. I'm sorry, they are expelled out during exhalation. This animation shows that glucose is broken down through oxidation and release of energy is taking place where ATP is seen to be emerging out from the mitochondria. This energy production, as you can see, takes place in the cell. Therefore, we call it as cellular respiration. We will now watch a video taken from Don't Memorize that will help us to understand the steps involved in respiration better. For this, our brain thinks about the movement, instructs the respective muscles and helps us perform the task. This is what we know as a voluntary activity. Now tell me, do we need to remind ourselves post some time that we have to inhale and exhale air? Or do we remind our heart to beat and pump blood? No, right? That just happens without our notice. These are the examples of involuntary activities. Involuntary activities are mostly the crucial ones that occur within us and which help us sustain life. Take this activity of breathing for example. Isn't it extremely important? If we don't breathe, then how will all the cells in our body obtain the necessary oxygen for survival? And how will the toxic carbon dioxide be released out? Also, how will the cells derive energy if the food molecules are not broken down? So overall, respiration is extremely important. Now tell me one thing, are breathing and respiration the same thing? I'm sure your answer will be yes, but that's not true. Let's understand what exactly the difference between the two is. To begin with, I want you to answer one simple question. How do we get the energy to perform all activities? Most of us will answer from the food we eat, right? Well, that's partially correct. The food we eat is the source of energy, which means that the energy is stored or locked inside the food. In order to unlock or derive the energy from it, the food needs to be broken down. And this requires oxygen. So we can say that the process in which the food is broken down in the cells with the help of oxygen to release energy is called respiration. And how is it different from breathing then? Well. Breathing does not involve breakdown of food molecules inside the cells. In fact, breathing is purely the exchange of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide to be precise. So the activity of inhalation and exhalation is breathing. Whereas deriving energy from food molecules with the help of oxygen is respiration. Does this mean that breathing is a part of respiration? Absolutely. Breathing is a smaller process which is considered as a part of the larger process of respiration. Let's once again go through the definition of respiration. It's the process in which the food is broken down in the cells with the help of oxygen to release energy. And how do the cells get oxygen? It's due to breathing, right? That's why we say that breathing is a part of respiration. 
Now the next important thing we need to understand is the types of respiration. Hold on, isn't it a simple process? How can there be types in this then? Well, respiration is classified in types based on the location where it occurs. There are three types of respiration to be precise. External, internal and cellular respiration. External respiration is the one which occurs at the nasal level. The oxygen from the surrounding air is brought inside the nasal cavity and the carbon dioxide is given out. This is called external respiration which involves interaction with the exterior world. In other words, external respiration is sometimes used synonymously with breathing. Next in the list is internal respiration. As the name suggests, the one which occurs internally or inside the body to be precise. When the oxygen from the air reaches the lungs, it gets transported to the blood. Similarly, carbon dioxide from the blood is given out in the lungs which travels later to the nasal area. The oxygen then travels throughout the body and is delivered to the cells and the carbon dioxide is similarly taken away. This exchange of gases that occurs inside the lungs, blood and the cells is called internal respiration. And last on the list is cellular respiration. Don't we know this? The name says it all. The process in which oxygen is used to break down the food molecules by the cells is called cellular respiration. Many times, internal and cellular respirations are confused with each other. But now, the difference is very clear. External respiration is where gaseous exchange occurs at the nasal area. Internal respiration is where gaseous exchange occurs between the lungs, blood and the cells. While cellular respiration is restricted to the cells only. So is this... I hope that you have understood all that you have seen. That was all for today. Today we have covered respiration and its types. Now that you know whose work it is in converting oxygen into carbon dioxide, none of you should say that you are super busy. Please do make time to read your textbook. Happy reading and happy learning. A gentle reminder, please be consistent in your studies. Thank you dear girls for joining me. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.